Hey everybody, my name is Tyler Boyd. I'm the curator of carnivores here at the Oklahoma City Zoo. You are here at our debut of our new segment called OKC Zoo at Two. Um, we're here today at our clouded leopard habitat. So you can see our clouded leopards behind me. Basically, this is our new digital series. We're hoping to keep you guys connected with us here at the zoo, let you know what's going on here while we're uh, going through kind of these uncertain times. And basically what this is gonna do, we're gonna bring you some new and exciting things that are still happening at the zoo every day. Uh, we're working alongside our animal caretakers who are still here hard at work taking care of everything we've got uh, here at the zoo. And this is basically going to allow you an opportunity to ask us questions about what we do each and every day and what we're doing during this time while you guys aren't here uh, to keep our animals happy, healthy, and interacting with us. So i um, tell you a little bit about these guys behind us. So we do have two clouded leopards. Uh, we have Rukai and JD. So these guys here are on the right. We've got Rukai. She's working with Mandy. Mandy is one of our lead animal caretakers here. On the left, we have JD. JD is working Hi, with Rick. Uh, Rick is also one of our animal caretakers on the carnivore team. Hey, Rick. Everybody say hi. Hi. <laughs> so these guys are working through a basic training uh, behaviors out here. This is what we do each and every day when we're open to the public again. Uh, we have a caretaker chat that we bring the trainers out here to work with the cats, get them used to running through a certain uh, series of behaviors. I'm gonna go through the training part first and then I'll talk a little bit about each individual cat because their attention span is not always the longest. We'll try and keep them here as long as we can. Um, so you can see both Mandy and Rick are working with target poles and that is a buoy on the end of a stick. Can you wave that? There we go. And what that does is we use that target pole and we can get them to move around their different habitat spaces and they'll actually touch their nose to that target. It's a way for us to position them in different ways to train new behaviors. Um, as we go through their training, they start with a basic target behavior like this uh, where they just touch their nose. But what that does is we can lead that onto bigger and uh, more advanced behaviors down the line. We can have them line up against the mesh uh, to receive voluntary in injections or voluntary blood draws. Um, and then you'll hear a little whistle like Mandy just did there. That lets them know, yep, you did it. That's exactly what we're asking for. Good job. Um, then you can see she's got one more tool in her hand there. That's actually a feed stick. That's the way, once they kind of do that behavior, whatever we're asking, we blow that whistle as a bridge to let them know, yep, that was good. And then we'll actually feed uh, their reinforcement or whatever their kind of favorite food or favorite treat is onto that feed stick and actually get that food to them safely through the mesh. Um, as you can see, like I said, short attention span, they're already done. So I'm gonna move off to this side so you guys can see the clouded leopards as well. Um, so like I said, we do have the two animals. We have Rukai, who's up on the hill there, and JD, who's kind of following the caretakers. These guys are new to us. They actually came to us in uh, this winter, December and January. Um, they are two young individuals. Rukai just had her first birthday. So if you guys have checked us out on Facebook and Instagram, we actually posted about Rukai's birthday. She received a pinata. Um, she just turned a year. She was born, uh, <coughs> sorry. She was born at the Pittsburgh Zoo um, and she was reared there. And then JD is just a little bit younger. He's about 11 months right now. Um, so his birthday is coming up next month. He was actually born at the Nashville Zoo. Now these guys are part of the SSP breeding program. And that stands for Species Survival Plan or Species Survival Program. And that is a big fancy word for kind of a genetic stud book, the who's who in the clouded leopard population. Um, each animal gets a ranking based on how um, much or how little their genes are represented within the AZA population or the AZA community. Um, these guys were a good match. So it's kind of like uh, Hello Cupid or whatever for animals basically. And it says these two are going to be good together um, genetically. So what we did here at the Oklahoma City Zoo, we had a space that became available. If you guys have been out here before, this is a habitat that was previously occupied by our snow leopards. Um, and then we were able to bring these guys in after the snow leopards left and hopefully we'll be breeding these guys in the future. They're a little young right now, um, but they are hopeful we can produce cubs with these guys down the future uh, or in the future. Um, yeah, so they were both born in separate places. They're doing a, we're doing co-rearing with these guys. They're going to be together basically their entire life is our goal. Um, so they were paired together at a very, very young age. Hopefully they'll be able to kind of strengthen that bond by being with each other. You can see they really like each other. They hang out all the time together. Um, but the thought is that they'll be able to give each other a little more comfortability, a little more stability in that relationship. And hopefully 
that'll uh, strengthen that bond and they'll be able to produce cubs successfully in the future. Um, so all of that kind of uh, pair bonding took place at the Pittsburgh Zoo in Pittsburgh, PA. Um, and then once the recommendation came down uh, from the SSP, they decided Oklahoma City was going to be their next home. Um, so we're very excited to have them here. The caretakers are very excited. We've had clouded leopards before. It's really nice to get a young pair in like this that we can work with from the start and really build that foundation of training uh, and trust that we have with these guys. So if you guys have questions, feel free. Um, we've got our PR team here. They're putting together uh, these videos. So feel free to ask questions. We've got some to start with, um, but we'll go ahead and get started. We do. So yeah, Tyler, great. We've got, we have been getting lots of questions. Everybody's really excited to learn about our clouded leopards, Rukai and JD. Um, so our first, what are the differences in Rukai and JD's personality? And this is from Husky Mug Life, at Husky Mug Life, sorry. Excellent, very, very good question. So um, as with all of our animals, each one of them has a different personality. Um, these guys came in with a certain personality and then we actually kind of have seen a switch since we put them outside. Um, so JD, has, when we first got him, JD was a little more timid, a little more shy. And then um, as we advance through kind of building that relationship with them, um, Rukai actually kind of became the more, I'd say, dominant. Um, she's the more comfortable, more curious animal once they transitioned outside. Um, because they are so young, um, they're both very, very playful still, um, which is excellent. They both are using this habitat outside. We actually built some new perching for them in here to let them get up off the ground a little bit. They are an arboreal species which means they'll spend a significant amount of time up in the trees. They're gonna walk away right now because they're gonna follow the caretakers. <laughs> so they should come back though. Caretakers um, come back. But yeah, so right now we're still trying to learn their personalities, but um, we do, right, it basically it comes down to Rukai as kind of the more curious, confident one. Um, but as part of that pair bonding process, what that allowed them to do is like, they kind of feed off of each other. So if something scary happens, there's a loud noise out here, we'll see them kind of come together. Very rarely do you see them more than probably eight to 10 feet apart in this habitat, which is very exciting. Um, and it gives us a lot of hope for the future that they're gonna have a strong bond and be able to produce cubs. That's awesome. Okay, so we also got, um, what are their favorite foods? And this came from our fan at Catherine K2244. Excellent. So. Carnivores, they're gonna eat meat. That is their number one thing um, that they're both into. So we feed a commercially processed diet here. Um, it's basically a ground meat and it's got all the vitamins, nutrients, minerals that they need out in the wild in, in human care here as well. Um, we try different things. We'd have a ground form. We also have what we call as a chunk diet. And it's kind of what you would imagine um, when you go to the grocery store and see like sirloin steak that's been cut up. It's very similar to that. Um, we do all sorts of other things with them. They're not as into the enrichment that we do here yet with food, uh, but we're trying new things for training. Um, we've tried goat's milk with them. It's kind of hit or miss. Some of the animals really like goat's milk and others are not as into it. Um, these guys pretty much though right now you saw in that training session that they did earlier, um, they, they're they still on their normal ground diet. That is rewarding for them. They really like it. So that's what we use more than anything. Great. Okay, so our next one is, what is the native, native habitat for clouded leopards? And this is from at Jennifer and Justin. Yeah, excellent question. So these guys, um, they live in the cloud forest. Um, so that's where they get their name, clouded leopard, is those spots on them, which we'll talk about here in a little bit, I'm sure. Um, as far as area of the world, they're gonna be from kind of that Southeast Asia range, uh, Nepal, Bangladesh, areas like that. Um, they can live up in the mountains, but they live in the forested areas because they are arboreal. You can see, I don't know if you guys can see, uh, looks like Rukai is up there right now, uh, showing you how high they like to get. So with a lot of these guys, they like to be as high as they can possibly get so they can keep an eye on everything going on around them, um, looking for prey, looking for any potential predators that may take these guys out. Um, but that's what they like to do most, um, is get up as high as possible in the trees. Yeah. Great, okay, so the questions, have, I mean, they've really been coming in. So we have, how do Ru uh, Rukai and JD spend their day at M. Lauren Smith? All right, Lauren. So these guys are probably very similar to your house cats at home. It's kind of a like play hard, sleep hard mentality here. So um, right away in the morning, they're usually pretty excited to see us come in. They run around like crazy. They get out on habitat here, bouncing around, climbing up on the trees. Um, then after about an hour or two of that, if you come by, they're probably gonna be perched to sleep on their platforms out here. 
uh, up until it's time to feed them again. So their day is spent mostly doing that. Um, we will bring them off habitat into our uh, animal holding areas. Um, if you guys check out our previous posts, you can see their indoor habitat. We actually built a new kind of playground atmosphere for them that'll help to allow them to do kind of their natural behaviors of climbing, jumping, pouncing, things like that. So they do get a fair amount of time in there as well. Um, and then the rest of it is spent out here um, doing our caretaker chats, informing the guests, informing you guys about what is so special about clouded leopards. Um, and part of that is those training sessions. Um, we do a lot of husbandry training for the behaviors. These guys being so young, we have a tremendous opportunity to kind of mold that uh, from a very, very early age so that we can take care of these guys throughout their entire life, uh, life cycle. Great. Okay, and our last one for today, what is your favorite part of your job? And that is from MK Knoll 7817. Awesome. So my favorite part of my job, um, there's a lot of them, so it's kind of hard to pick. So I'm probably going to go on a big tangent here of a lot of different things. Um, so as a curator of the area, uh, I kind of oversee the bigger carnivore collection. Um, the animals are an essential part to what we do every day. But really for me, one of the most important things is the staff that I have that are here each and every day taking care of these animals educating the public, teaching the public about what is so special about these cats in particular and all the animals here at the zoo. Um, we have a tremendous opportunity and a tremendous responsibility. A lot of these animals that you guys come and see are endangered, they're vulnerable, they're threatened, uh, they're facing mass crises out in the wild. Um, so any chance that we can get to really show what we do here and the hard work and the hard effort we put into maintaining these species not just at the Oklahoma City Zoo, but throughout the AZA community as a whole. Um, especially in times like these where everybody's trying to come together and support each other, that's what's the most important and that's what I enjoy most about my job is working with this team of incredible people that I get to work with. That's great. All right. All right, guys. Well, thank you very much. Uh, stay tuned. We're going to be doing this every single day. The OKC Zoo at 2, uh, 2 p.m. Central Time. Go ahead, join us, watch us on all of our uh, social media platforms, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, keep up on our zoo website. Um, we're going to be keeping in touch with you guys and making sure we share updates each and every day about the exciting things happening here at the OKC Zoo.